there in the background is all closed up. And uh, I came in this morning because I had some things to do around the store. So uh, I wanted to just come in and check on things, make sure things are all right. I had some bills to pay. I figure I pay them from here where it's quiet and I don't have to worry about, you know, anything around the house distracting me. It's hard for me to work from home, I'll tell you, with, uh, you know, all the all the distractions around the house, my cats, my video games, Netflix, Hulu, Prime, uh, CBS All Access, HBO Now. I mean, I've got too much to draw my attention away, plus all the projects and stuff I'm doing around the house. So I came in the store today to just jump on things, try to try to get it done. And uh, it's it's weird. I've been closed for 19 days now, 19 days. And it's getting to the point where, you know, I, I'm coming in and I'm watching. I'm watching my money in my accounts, you know, as I do it, as I pay my bills. And like I said in previous videos, I was prepared. I have a, a contingency for just this type of event. I'm paranoid. It's part of my nature. So, you know, this is kind of like a aha, I told you so kind of moment for me where, you know, being really, really cautious with my money has, has paid off. That said, it doesn't mean I'm not losing a vast amount of money right now. And it's insane. It's infuriating. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm headed into the point where I'm going to lose tens of thousands of dollars in gross sales. I don't typically talk about my numbers when I do videos and stuff. I don't, I don't tell people what I make. It's rude. It's impolite. But I will say this, uh, my gross right now, I am losing, uh, it's going to be tens of thousands of dollars before this is all over, hopefully at a minimum. And that's gross. Of course, it's not, you know, what I take home, but I'm paying the rent right now and I'm not open. And I don't know what they're going to do with me in terms of rent. And it's driving me nuts. We were just talking about this. I was on uh, the Sleazy podcast. So you should all check it out. He does it on Anchor. And uh, you can pretty much watch it anywhere. Uh, it's called the Sleazy Podcast. And in the most recent one I was on there, you, you'd know Sleazy from Nerdco. If you watch my older videos, we did a whole season of episodes of a series called Nerdco. Uh, probably some of my favorite footage I've ever put out on my YouTube channel. So check it out and check out the Sleazy Podcast. I'm on there. We talked for about an hour just about small businesses and other things. That Some of the stuff I'm actually going to repeat here. But um, yeah. So here I am at the store paying bills, paying money, and I don't have income coming through the door. And that's a weird feeling. No matter how prepared you are, this sucks. You know, it's weird. I'm staying at home every day. I kind of like waking up when I want to, going to bed when I want to, showering when I want to, you know, uh, getting a lot of the at-home projects I've been working on. I'm working on a feature wall right now for my TV I've run 120 feet of HDMI cables, uh, new optical, I mean, and everything for a new feature wall that's going to have a TV mounted to it. I'm happy doing all this stuff, but at the same time, I need to be at work. I need to be making money, but you know, not at the cost of my health. So am I okay being closed down? Yeah, sure. If it's, if it's what's required uh, to keep myself safe, safe, to keep other people safe, cool. I'm fine with that. Uh, do I like it? Not necessarily. There, I mean, it's it's bittersweet. There are things I like and there are things I, I hate about it. And one of them is looking at the books and knowing that there is a lot of money that's not coming in right now. And that's really, really frustrating. Um, but being prepared for it has made it a lot easier for me. You know, I feel really bad. I, I see I have a couple of friends who aren't working right now. And they were a lot closer to living check to check than I was by a long shot. And, you know, I'm scared for my friends. I don't want to see anyone, you know, getting behind on their mortgages and stuff because of this thing. So it's uh, it's crazy. I'm glad I was prepared. Uh, so I come into the store today. I'm paying those bills. And one of them was my Spectrum bill. I have a Spectrum business account here. And I just recently changed over my service. They were they were charging me one hundred and thirty three dollars a week for phone, a landline phone and Internet. And it used to be like you know, $88, which I was fine with, but it kept on like the bill got higher and higher every, uh, every time I got a new one, like it was crazy. And then eventually it was up to like $140 and I was like, nah, I'm done. So I called them and they said, well, there's nothing. So I said, fine, cool. You know, wow has a great starting program right now. And they were like, let's 
send you over to retention. So I talked to them, and they said, oh, we can give you, a, you know, you can keep your business account. We'll keep your internet. We'll, we'll put you on a, a mobile device. And I was like, oh, cool. I get a cell phone for the store, which is nice. You know, I can take it home with me. If, if I ever need to make a call from the work phone, I can do that. I don't mix, like, my work and uh, personal stuff. So it's nice to have a phone I can carry with me. So that took what should have been a super easy thing. Long time fan, thinking you and L1 Games in these tough times. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Nice of you to say. Thanks for your support. And thank all of you for your support. But you too for commenting. Curious, since Ohio's got the essential business thing going on right now with lockdown. Um, my ability to enter the store is not compromised. I can um, call security, mall security. And they will come, um, and they have to log everyone in who comes into the mall uh, for security purposes, of course. But uh, I can come and access my store whenever I want. So that's really nice, which is, you know, why I'm here paying bills today and doing my stuff today. So that's nice. But uh, as I was saying, um, I got everything squared away. I got the cell phone. I come in today. Um, I, it wasn't easy to square away the cell phone. It was a real pain. Am I going to sell stuff online? No, right now I'm just... Closed, closed down. Uh, I don't. I'm not even set up to sell stuff online. So, yes, they do treat me pretty well. I mean, I don't know what's going on with my rent. I don't know if they're going to try to charge me full rent <laughs> while I'm closed. We'll see how well they're willing to treat me when we get all that figured out. So I come in today, um, and I have no internet. Uh, I've just changed over to phone. Now the the cell phone thing was a pain. It was really hard to get through. Um, it should have been a very easy process. Uh, I had to set it up online. It kept on not accepting my information and my account. And it took me, I think it was nine calls over the course of a week and a half to get them to activate this stupid phone properly. It just wouldn't activate. It wasn't accepting my, uh, my, uh, account number. It, it was just crazy. And finally got that done, right? So just last week, it, I think it was on Thursday, it finally started working. I'm like, hey, I got a phone for the business. That's great. And then sure enough, I come in today to pay bills. I've got no internet access. I'm freaking out, you know? Like, why does everything have to be so hard? So I had to call them, and I was on, them, on the phone with them all this morning and finally got my internet up and running. So everything should be squared away when I come back. If this had happened while I was open, it would have been a nightmare. I can't process credit cards without internet access. My uh, my whole point of sale system runs through the internet. So like I would have been totally screwed if I had been open. So it's a good thing that, you know, this all happened right now that it just, I mean, it just happened that way. It was, it was not planned. So that was good. But uh, so I've got all that squared away. Um, it was really frustrating to come in and not have internet, but uh, th their service is pretty good. They transferred me three times. That sucked. And I was on the phone for 35 minutes. That sucked. But at least they fixed the problem. Um, although I will say one thing. Uh, having a phone that I can take home for the store is really strange. And I watch it. You know, I look at it every now and then. Who is still calling me? I got two calls today. People are calling the store. If you live in Ohio, you know we're locked down. You know essential businesses are the only ones that are open. You, you know, order your games on Amazon because you aren't going to a local video game store anywhere in the, in the state to get games. I just don't understand who's calling me. It's totally strange. So, yeah, I've been wondering why I, I'm still getting calls. But I uh, came in. Um, I can now, now that I have internet, I can jump on and I can actually... Uh, I have two accounts, and uh, I'll transfer funds to my checking and have that looking relatively good. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm safe. I mean, by the time this is all over, I'll still be okay. Um, some of my funds will de be depleted, and that sucks. Um, I mean, no one wants to just lose money. This is money that, like, if I decided to close my store down uh, a month ago, before I signed my lease. And if you want to watch me sign my lease, I actually did a video about it. Go check out my videos. But if I'd closed down a month ago, like all the money that I'm losing right now when I'm paying the rent, when I'm paying these bills, but I don't have income coming in, that would be money in my pocket. My whole contingency 
for an event like this would be money in my pocket. But it's right now money I'm watching deplete from my account. And that's a really frustrating, frustrating feeling. And uh, they sent emails. Oh, man, I was so frustrated. And I've seen this. Um, I've seen some people from the current administration talking about it. And now I got an email from Simon, the, the people who own the mall at Tuttle Crossing here. And, and they're going to help our small businesses. And we're going to help you if you need to get you know small business loans. And I'm like, for real? You think I'm going to get a loan? I, I started my business in 1998. I built it slow and steady. I worked really hard to make it happen. And I never once took out a loan. Not one time did I take out any kind of loan. And I think that's part of the reason that it's worked for me. You know, these, I mean, a loan will, will destroy you. You take out a big, you know, small business loan. You, you know, do your store up and you get everything ready to go. And now you've got another bill and you're paying interest on it. Like, no one needs that. You don't have to do that if you open your own business. I mean, I'm proof positive of that. I worked long and hard. It took me five years at the flea market before I had enough to start my full-time store. But it was worthwhile because it kept me from faltering. And it kept me from having that extra bill. But my question is, why would the government and why would Simon even consider sending that email? I mean, it's... It's almost insulting. Hey, we know that you're not making any money right now. So instead of telling you something about what we're going to do to, to offer relief to our tenants, we'll just uh, building a voiceover gig with a, See, yeah, start your business with no money. Start your career with no money and you will do better. Um, but yeah, why, why would they send this to me? Instead of sending me information that can help me, like offer relief to me for, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm in, I'm in your mall and I would like information. You know, the last time Simon updated their social media was on Facebook. And I think that was on the 15th. Go, go to Facebook and look at the mall at Total Crossing. I don't know. This was about a week or two ago. I looked and their latest update was on March 15th. And it was talking about, you know, St. Patrick's Day is coming. They haven't updated any of the business owners. And, you know, maybe I'm screwing up by talking about this in a public forum. But you know what? It's the truth. You know, they haven't informed anyone. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're going to offer me relief on my rent that I'm paying while I'm not open. I mean, look, the day they closed the mall, I was here doing business when, you know, what, 30 stores were closed because I'm willing to be here and do my thing. If I have to wear a mask, I'll wear it while I'm working, but I need to make that money if I can be open. The mall, because of the government, local government closed non-essential businesses. And, you know, so the mall had to, you know, um, go along with that. But I was here ready to do business and now I am not able to do so. So for them not to say, hey, we're gonna offer you a break on your rent, that, that's ridiculous. And for them not to even contact us, that's even more ridiculous. I mean, even if it was just to say, hey, look, we haven't forgotten you. We're, we're, we're going to try to work something out for you. That would be great. But they're not even doing that. And that's what's really frustrating about this all right now. I don't have just a land. If I was in a strip center, I could probably just call, you know, a leasing company and say, hey, look, you know, what's going on with my rent? But here I'm working with a, a much larger corporation and it's just, uh, it's not something I have the ability to do. I've written my leasing agent and I haven't heard back since I think it was the 21st. I got an email response of last month and I haven't heard back since then. So that's, um, extremely irritating. I, I would like to just know what's going on again. I have every intention of paying my rent. I have every intention, if this lasted six months, of opening up my doors and going right back into business. That's not a problem. But what is a problem for me is a company that isn't letting me know what's happening, you know, or what they're considering doing for the businesses in their mall. So, yeah, that's that's that, at least. Um, what else is going on? Man. Uh, told you about the sleazy podcast, go and check that out. I was on there. It was a really good time. Uh, I went to the post office because the post office can't deliver mall mail. 
they can't access the store, so they can't go to the mailboxes. So I have to actually go to the post office and pick up anything that's, you know, showing up there. And it's a whole process, you know. First of all, I don't want to be at the post office because people go to the post office. I'm avoiding people right now. I want to be healthy. You know what I mean? So I'm at the post office. I'm looking around at everyone. They're all looking shady. I got my mask on, you know. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I have a, a bunch of these masks. These are the good ones, too. These are the N95s. Um <laughs> Uh, I have these just because I was doing a ton of house projects, you know, when I, when I uh, demoed my bathroom, when I ripped out that, that, uh, that mantle and wall above my fireplace, you know, I, I had these masks for that long before all this became a thing and those became something good to have. And, um, I'm, uh, anyway, I'm wearing my, my and, uh, I'm in, I'm in the post office and I, I think there's a little bit of dust on them just from all the work I've been doing around them. This is a new, a new one out of the box, but there's dust in there maybe. So I put the mask on, I go in, I'm standing around. Everyone's wearing one. Everyone's got rubber gloves on. I didn't have gloves on. I just kicked the doors open and stuff. You know, I, I just don't use my hands. And uh, you're shut down. The owner of the shop said the mall is still demanding rent. See, that's outrageous, man. And it's wrong. And when those mall doors open, you gotta wonder, What's going to happen to all? I wonder when I come back here and I open up, I was prepared. I'm one of the few. I'm, I'm one of the lucky. Nothing in the mall's website except closed due to government. Yeah, see, right? It's crazy. Um, I wonder how many stores are just going to move out during this. If I didn't have the money, that's what I would do. I would just move the F out right now. I'd, I'd be packing up my store. I'd be out. I'd pack up, put it all in my garage, you know? But uh, anyway, I'm at the post office. A little piece of dust in my mask. I cough. Uh, it's kind of muffled in the mask, huh? <coughs> right? And I swear to God, it was something out of a zombie movie. Everyone in the freaking post office. <gasps> I, I swear to God, if they were armed, they would have murdered me. It was right out of a pandemic flick. I was like, what's going on? But they all, and no one, I could tell you, no one wanted to be the one to come up to the counter I was at next, right? They're all in line and there's tape lines on the floor, like all six or eight feet apart each. And every single person, every head in the post office turned and looked at me all at once. There were probably maybe eight or ten people in, in the post office at that time. So the line was really long because the people are so far apart and wrapped around. And I'm just trying to get my stuff, you know, that, that would normally be delivered to the store. Sure enough, one of them is a package from China. <laughs> so here I am with a package from China. I cough. Everyone looks at me all at once. It was crazy. Uh, and I know and Everyone was thinking, oh, my God, he's sick. He's got it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, was a, I almost expect some Lord of the Flies stuff, man. I thought they were going to all beat me with sticks and stab me to death or something. But, um, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Uh, and you know what? Honestly, if I was at the post office and someone else coughed, I probably would have looked at him the same way. Because I am a super paranoid cat and I'm a germaphobe. So, uh, I get it. I'm not, uh, I'm not, like condemning people for their actions, but uh, it was a really funny thing to be part of, to be the object, you know, of, of disdain, you know, all these people at once. So I just kind of hustled out of there. So send me some dead bats from China. <laughs> yeah, you know, I heard um, a bunch of people were, were talking about, um, ooh, if you get stuff from China, don't pop the bubble wrap because the air is from China and the air will get you sick. Um, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It was really funny. And uh, people are serious about that. It, it's crazy, you know? Oh, certain people, Asian people carry it. Bubble wrap from Asia will get you sick because it's got Asian air in it. Come on, folks. Cool out. Just don't touch your face, you know? Uh, so anyway, um, in the meantime, while I'm not here, uh, I showed up to the post office the other day. Uh, I, I'm sorry, man. I saw that too late and I didn't get to read it all. Um, but uh, being at home has offered a lot of just like time to do things that I don't often get to do, which has been kind of fun. And uh, you're Filipino. That's kind of racist. Um, I hope you're not thinking what I said was racist. Uh, yeah, people are in, indeed racist. Um it's, it's outrageous. And there, there, there's been a, a spike 
in hate crimes against Asian people in America. And I, it's, it's, it's appalling that people are so stupid that they think that your race determines how like you can pass the disease along to other people. It's, it's nuts what people think. People are, are really, really dumb. Um, I just don't get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, what can you do? The most you can do is sit back and laugh at the stupidity of people, which I do. When they say, don't, don't pop the bubble wrap because the Asian air will get you sick. You know, I mean, I, I got to say, you know, that's preposterous. But at the same time, it's funny uh, in that unfortunate kind of way. You know, the essence of comedy is in someone else's misfortune. And stupid people definitely, definitely um, get me to laugh. So... That's all I can say during this time. But uh, anyway, being around here, uh, not around here, in the store, being at home for the past 19 days has offered me the opportunity to do a lot of uh, uh, projects that I've been working on. I've been double time on that wall, ripping everything out. I've got all my HDMIs and an optical um, run. I even ran a coaxial cable. So it all runs behind the wall, goes down to the basement, comes up on another wall where I'm going to put an entertainment center. And uh, I even put the coaxial so I can hook up old school game systems and everything. So it should be, it should be pretty cool when it's done. We'll see. Now I'm going to throw up some concrete board. I have to do a skim coat on my, uh, on my, uh, been accused of Pearl Harbor growing up in Acraxia. <laughs> you weren't even alive, you know, and people are blaming you. Your parents might not have even been alive at that point, depending on how old you are. Uh, people are stupid, man. Bigots, man. I hate them. I hate them. You know, I've always said I'm not a racist, but there is a group of people that I'm really bigoted against. And it's like the, uh, the white trash, Aryan nation, you know, white supremacist KKK types. Like, they just make me look bad. Uh, when I first started shaving my head, I walked into my unit, and I was, I was still in the Army at the time. And... Uh, uh, NCO from comms and I forget the guy's name. Um, no, I don't forget his name, but I'm not going to say his name because all in all, he was a nice guy. But the first thing he said to me, he's like, what are you a skinhead now? Dead serious. And I'm like, dude, seriously, come on. People are dumb, man. Um, I've come to expect it from them, but it never sent, it never stops surprising me. But, uh, what was I even talking about now? Now I forget what I was saying before. Mm. Oh yeah. The wall. So I'm building the feature wall. Um, and I've, I've put a lot more work into it lately. I also took the old mantle out and I ripped it apart and I turned it into a, uh, a, a modern media shelf. So my house was built in 49. So I took this old mantle and I added new shelves to it. I extended the back out, uh, most woodwork I've ever done. And, and I put shelves in it that are perfect for Blu-ray or, you know, DVD cases or video game boxes. And I added LED lights inside, you know, so it's this vintage mantle that's now a modern day media case if uh if you follow me on twitter you've seen it so if you don't check me out on twitter at l1 games you can see pictures and I'm, I'm also updating everything i'm doing with the wall on uh on twitter so uh it's all looking good so i love doing projects i, I one of my toilets like the, the water you could always hear it running so i ripped the whole tank off i replaced all the hardware you know this is all stuff that i never get the opportunity to do and this is stuff i don't know how to do so I jump on YouTube, I'm watching videos, I'm learning. Um, it took me a year to remodel my bathroom, but like I have a spa bathroom now that cost me probably more than or less than half of what the original quote from the contractor was. You know, maybe a dumb question, but do you sell the GameCube HDMI adapters? I don't want one at the moment. Yeah, I do actually. Um, uh, they're, they're the ones that Hyperkin. Ooh, here, I'll show you. Hold on one sec. Good thing you asked now while I'm at the store. <laughs> so yeah, I've got these. This is the uh, the Hyperkin one. Uh, it works for GameCube, N64, um, and uh, Super Nintendo. They're twenty ninety nine, and it's it's a nice HDMI cable. So and I have those for everything. I have them for uh, PlayStations, Dreamcast, Saturn, uh, Genesis. So yeah, I have HDMI cords for everything, but. Anyway, yeah, so I'm doing the projects around the house. It's great because I finally have time to do these things that I never had time to do before. And I'm learning all kinds of new stuff. You know, um, I'm a new homeowner. Um, I'm an older guy. I'm not going to talk about my age. You can see the gray. But uh, 
it's kind of cool. Like I always thought I was going to be a guy who just rented for the, you know, the rest of my life. I used to live in a little spot called German village just outside of downtown Columbus. And it's a historical neighborhood. Um, it's beautiful. But then I moved, uh, when my daughter came to live with me, uh, I moved so she could do your schools. Columbus public schools suck. Uh, I love you long time sleazy. Hey everyone say hi to sleazy. Uh, Eric Emmerich, he's here. That's uh, Sleazy from the Sleazy Podcast and from NerdCo. Um, so, uh, yeah, I moved to Hilliard and then I got kind of sold on having like a garage and real streets and German Village. It's all cobblestone streets and no space. So, um, you know, I don't know what happened. At some point it was like I started adding up how much I had spent in rent over like the last five years. I was like, man, that's a house payment. In the day you're allowed to open back up. Hey, man, well, I appreciate your support. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so I became a homeowner. I bought a house, man. And uh, then I started learning, like, how to do a little bit of this and that. I'm buying tools. I'm, I'm fixing things around the house. I learned to lay tile. I learned to install a heated floor. I learned to, you know, do walls, drywall, the whole deal. And, you know, it's kind of fun when you get into it. And the money you save is, of course, amazing. There are certain things I'm not going to try to do. I don't do major plumbing. I don't do electrical uh, I'm not going to flood or burn my house down. And, uh, you know, I had someone come in and do the windows because I'm not going to try to replace windows or anything. But um, it's kind of cool to be around the house. And, you know, not being open has afforded me the opportunity to really uh, mess around with some of that. So uh, that's been real good. Uh, and, you know, I might I might do a video from home, actually, where I just kind of walk you guys and I'll, I'll show you the project. I'm working on and that I've completed. I'm working on a Mega Touch, a Mega Touch XL. Again, I posted pictures of it on um, on uh, Twitter. But it's a uh, there's a phone ringing in one of the stores in the background. You probably can't hear it, but it's driving me nuts. But uh, it's one of those old bar touchscreen games. It's really awesome. You can play checkers on it, poker. It's got a strip poker thing where it, like the the picture actually gets naked if you keep winning hands. So I can't sell it at the store. So I don't know. I'm I'm probably just going to try to sell it online. Um, but I bought it at an auction what, probably a year, year and a half ago, and I just haven't had time to mess with it. And now I've got it all up and running and clean. It's beautiful. I love it. So it's kind of nice to have time to work on these little projects. FedEx Muzz, the interior still looks great, by the way. Speaking of the GameCube, old copy of Sonic Jim's collection for me. I wish I had one right now. I don't think I have one over there. Uh, although it is interesting to come in and see my inventory hasn't changed at all. It's 19 days. Like... I get a really good turnover on a lot of my inventory. So it's really weird to see nothing changing. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, maybe I'll do a, a live stream from the house or something and just show you guys all the projects I'm working on just for the fun of it. I know it's not video game related, but um, the projects I'm finishing now are leading up to me finishing my game room. And I'm, I'm de dedicating an entire room to nothing but my video games and stuff. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I've, I've wanted a really big dedicated game room for a long time. And if you, if you ever watch my videos, if you look on my main page, I think I still have a playlist uh, called Building a Game Room. And it's when I took like a little room in my last house. Uh, it was a house I was renting. And, you know, every house has that little room where you put like an office or a crib or whatever. And I turned that room into kind of a major gaming area. But it was like more like a gaming nook than a man cave. And this time I want to do that on a much larger scale. So... That's going to be my next major project project. And right now having all this time off where I can work around the house and get these little things done. That's all leading to that. Cause you know, I had to like, I had to redo the bathroom before I did the game room because I was taking out part of the wall. And you know, there was a time when there was a hole between the bathroom and that room. And uh, I have to, I have to do the mantle before I do the game room because I'm building a feature wall and I need to refinish my floors. So that has to be done before I can refinish the floors. I'm having someone else refinish the floors. I'm not even trying to mess with that. But uh, I want to keep all my original hardwood. So I have someone coming in. So the floors have to get done before I can build a game room. So the mantle has to get done. then, Or the mantle, but the feature wall. Then the floors get done. And then I can build my game room. So it's, it's all a process. And uh, I will, by the way, when I do my game room, I will be taking footage of it and showing how I build it just like when I did my last one in the, the building a game room playlist in that series of videos, which I, I think it was a really impressive setup. And if you like it, you can leave some comments on those videos. 
Nice job on the mantle. Even the finish looks original. Oh, thanks, man. I'm glad you like it. Um, yeah, that, that was some sanding, man. It used to be originally like a red wood, like a red stain, maybe something that was popular back in the old days. I like more deep. That's a Jacko bean stain. I like coffee, like um, cocoa stain colors. So, uh, yeah, I think it came out real nice. I'm really happy with it. And uh, what else? Man. Oh, Sleazy's here. Uh, leave some comments, Sleazy. We were talking about your podcast. Leave a, leave a link. Um, we were talking about the stuff that we're just playing and watching, man. We're on lockdown, so there's a lot you can do in terms of just streaming your, your favorite content and um, playing video games. And it's funny, I went back to Minecraft. So I've been playing Minecraft again. And this is a, a, a world in Minecraft that I started when Minecraft first hit the Xbox 360. And it's all in survival mode. It's the most massive structure. I mean, I've, I've put years into this thing. So uh, I've just been back on their building. And it's been so long since I've played Minecraft. There's so much now added that I have no idea what's going on. I'm just doing basic building um, and looking up YouTube videos like to see what else I can, I can make happen. Uh, L1 Let's Plays coming soon. I am actually doing some live streams. Now, if if you look in previous videos, you notice that every Thursday, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was every Wednesday morning, I was doing a L1 Games, like a, a VR live stream, and then sometimes I was doing like regular games. But I, this is a vlog channel, you know, that, like what I'm doing right now, talking to the camera, this is what I'm comfortable with, and this is what I do, you know? Uh, I don't want to be a guy you know, a drop in the ocean of live streaming, you know, let's play guys. That's just not me. It's not who I am or what I do, but I did start a new channel and you can go subscribe to it. It's called L1 streams. And I think I've only got like 20 subscribers on there right now. I just started it not too long ago. And whenever I get the opportunity, I don't have like a set schedule where I'm streaming and, you know, putting stuff up, but, um, definitely, uh, follow me on Facebook and definitely follow me on Twitter where you're definitely, I mean, on Twitter, there's always updates when I stream. So um, you will see there's some streaming content on there already. Some stuff I've been playing. I just the other day I played before it came out the, uh, the Resident Evil 3 demo. And that was a lot of fun. And I, I hope to do more streaming, but that's where I'm going to do it. I'm never going to do it here. So uh, it's, it's double the content. You know, if you're subscribed to me and you watch these videos and then you're subscribed to L1 Streams and you watch those video then you'll get the full L1 experience. But, you know, the full L1 experience is big, man. It's vast now. I've got a TikTok. I've got an Instagram. I've got um, the, the Facebook page and the Facebook group. And I've got here on YouTube two channels now. So there's a lot of content out there, and it's different content everywhere. There isn't a single thing on TikTok that's anywhere else, you know. And it's just stupid stuff, just showing game consoles and kind of like I do on the Instagram. And... You know, there's always something. So check me out on all the social media, but definitely here on YouTube, check out L1 Streams and follow me, um, subscribe to me, hit the bell icon and you'll get updates. Um, if you're following me on Twitter, uh, there's always a, um, a, a tweet that pops up whenever I live stream. So uh, you'll be able to follow me on there and that'll be really convenient. And it's a lot of fun. I like to get comments. Um, it's a great place to interact with me personally, uh, kind of like you're doing right now. And talk to me while I'm, you know, just playing video games. So, yeah. Uh, so, I'm playing Minecraft. Um, I've also been playing Fable Anniversary. It came up for free on Xbox Live Gold. And, you know, I mean, check out your free games, guys. If this is a time when, when a lot of us can't really be spending a ton of money, a ton of extra money on new games. So, it's a perfect time. We all have, you know, our, our favorite, you know, Xbox Live or... Um, um, PlayStation Network, and they they offer the free games. And typically, you know me, I hate digital content, and I did a whole video about it. Uh, what is it? Two videos ago. Uh, definitely check out my my video on digital distribution. And uh, it's it's digital content's a sore spot for me. We know that, but if it's free with the account, then I'm cool with that. You saw Last of Us got delayed. Yeah, it does suck, man. I think all of us are that. But again, while we're waiting for that, <laughs> and I haven't even bought Resident Evil 3 yet, and I'm eager to play it, but I'm playing the free games. I mean, why not? 
And I think uh, it's Shadow of the Colossus is on PS4 right now, and I wouldn't mind playing through that again. So I'll play probably play through that again. I'm about two-thirds of the way through Fable Anniversary right now, uh, playing through Evil, killing everyone, uh, buying up all the property in Oakvale and renting it out, and now I'm going to all the other surrounding villages and killing everyone, buying all the property. It's a beautiful game. It, it, it reflects real life to me, you know? You, you can do all these horrible things, and then all you have to do is donate to the church and you become good. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying Fable Anniversary. So, um, yeah, and when, you know, I don't know. If I, if I get really bored and I find I have nothing, I have the, the Telltale Batman games were free last month. One of them was, at least. So I'm going to be playing that next. I mean, there's no reason to be spending money uh, when I have all these free games I can play you know, from Sony and Microsoft. Yeah, Fable is the only place where, yeah, I get we're back on my rent. Um, definitely not getting here in the mall. But uh, uh, what else? Uh, streaming uh, just TV and movies. Um, this is probably the best time ever to watch pandemic movies because it's kind of interactive. So, you know, watch Outbreak and, you know, curl up on your couch. And zombie flicks, you know, this is a great time for that. But uh, I watched Money Heist. Has anyone, I mean, everyone's seen Money Heist on the Netflix, uh, you know, what do you call that? The menu. But uh, it's actually a really decent series. And uh, I watched through all that and the new season is up now. It just came up the other day. So I'm definitely going to watch the new season of that. And uh, I haven't gotten to watch Ozark yet. Um. Did I watch the documentary Not For Resale? No, I did not. Uh, but I will check it out. Um, what else? Ozark I haven't watched. I tried to watch Altered Carbon. I don't like that dude. What's his name? I forget that guy's name. He plays the Falcon. Um, just, I don't know. What do I think of the claim that the outbreak created at Escape A? I, I, sorry, I don't get the question. Um, escaped a biolab. Oh, um, you know, <laughs> I just talked about watching Outbreak movies. That sounds like the plot of one, definitely. Um, I don't I don't fall into conspiracy theories. Um, I think a pandemic like this was bound to happen. They've been warning about it for uh, years now, a couple of years at least. And um, hey, Surreal, what's up, man? Um, it was bound to happen, and I think our uh, our government's preparedness was low level. Um, we should have had a pandemic response team. We didn't. They were fired in 2018. Uh, we had several branches of government that are supposed to be in place for exactly this kind of event. They were all defunded. Um, so, yeah, but let's not get into politics. It's really not something I should... Dead men don't wear plaid is awesome. Um it's definitely not something I want to get into, and I don't really get into politics on this channel. Um, so I'll just... <laughs> but uh, needless to say, I don't think we have... We would normally have to be where we are right now. I think we're now as a product of our current administration, and um, our readiness was, was bad. Our reaction was poor and slow. And now on to... Yes, let us... Uh, on to other things. Um, I was talking about streaming. So that's uh, the uh, the Netflix stuff that I've been watching. Oh, and Norseman. If you haven't watched Norseman, it's really funny. It's like, a, imagine like a, a comedic, but very dry Vikings. Uh, that, that show has been really good. I've enjoyed it. So that's one to check out. On Hulu, uh, of course, I watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. One of my most guilty... Yes, it's the perfect time for a Resident Evil playthrough. Um, that's what I actually, I think I called, what did I call my stream that day? Go on uh, L1 Streams and look. Um, yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it, dude. I'm not going to talk about conspiracy theories. Um, oh, see, man, that just totally got my mind. One of my most guilty pleasures for streaming is The Masked Singer. I love that show, man. I've been watching it and watching it. Um, so I'm, I'm having a lot of fun just watching stuff that, you know, I'm all caught up on everything I watch. Uh, I've So I've gone back. Now I'm watching Black Adder on Hulu. If you're a Rowan Atkinson fan, a Mr. Bean fan, um, 
Black Adder is hilarious. And uh, I just started season two of that. I just finished the first season. Um, this is a good time to ask. If, if you're a, a fan of Doctor Who, I think Black Adder is a Time Lord. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, anyone in the comic books, there's a documentary Stan Lee that's been updated on YouTube's official on demand, absolutely free, fun to watch. Yeah, I would definitely recommend something like that. YouTube is a great place to go, and you know you have you know nothing to watch, and you're you're looking for new content. So uh, yeah, man, um, I've been watching a lot of stuff on uh, Amazon Prime. Also, I just went back and rewatched it, and now I'm about to watch it too because I haven't seen it yet. And uh, I watch all those fixer upper shows too, because, you know, like I said earlier, I'm doing a lot of projects around the house and I'm looking for style, you know, st stylistically, I'm looking for ideas. I grew up, my mom worked for a design company. So I grew up with an ever changing household with uh, always like the most current, you know, uh, design trends. And so I watch these shows now. I'm fixing up my house all the time. You know, I want to stay current. I want to see, you know, what's, uh, you know, in style and what's not. I'm reading articles. It's ridiculous. Like five years ago, you couldn't have ever convinced me I would be doing this stuff. Um, so yeah, all those shows you can watch on Property Brothers, Fixer Upper, Good Bones, Flipping Boston. I mean, all these crazy shows. Um, Love it or list it. I mean, this it's just too many to name. And uh, I've seen them all now. It's it's ridiculous. Um. So yeah, I think that's it. I think God, guys, we've covered everything. It's been 41 minutes. Uh, I talked about the store. I talked about the Sleazy Podcast. Go check out the Sleazy Podcast. Um, it's really good. On the last one, I think it was an hour and five minutes total. Uh, if you just need something to listen to, check it out. A lot of conspiracy theorists are online here. You know, stay safe. Yeah, you know, you too. That's the, that's the, uh, I miss Bob Vila. Um, that's, that's the main message here, guys. Stay safe. Be safe. Be smart. Don't do anything ridiculous. Stop inviting your friends over, man. Just chill out at the house for a while. You know, we're gamers. That's what we do. We're basement dwellers, man. Um, <laughs> so, you know, get your favorite games out and play them for the next few weeks, and let's see where this goes. Let's all try to be safe and healthy, right? Um, so, this old house is still going strong. You know, I didn't even know that. It's not on any of the streaming services. Um, so, I'm out of here. Um, I will do a video, uh, best of luck to you too, man, uh, soon. I think I'll do one from the house and I'll, I'll just walk around. I'll give you guys a tour of, uh, my projects, what I'm doing, uh, my remodeled bathroom. Eric, no one can buy a switch now. <laughs> uh, I wish I, I, I sold that one like the day before we closed down. I totally would have, uh, let you come and pick it up, man. Um, so yeah, that's it. I think we're done. 41 minutes. Everyone keeps on leaving comments, though, and I can't just leave you all hanging. GameCube is at hours of playtime every day. You've been home for three weeks. Yeah, 19 days, man, I've been here. Well, here. Not here. I haven't been here for 19 days. It's nuts. Um, it's the longest vacation I've ever had. My eye isn't twitching like it used to, so it's probably good. Um, it's been a decade since I've had a great vacation, so I'm going to go back home and get to work on some of those projects. Um, you'll, you'll hear from me soon. Uh, I like to keep doing these virus update videos so you guys know what's happening with me and, uh, maybe some of my views on it. And I promise I'll try not to get political. <laughs> um, the live video of you doing your best Bob Vila. Um, well, maybe I'll do a live stream while I'm doing some of the work around the house. I don't know. I got some concrete board to put up after I put this skim coat over my, I have to do a, a plaster skim coat over the face of the fireplace to level it out for the concrete board because I'm tiling that and I need everything to be level, you know, so I learned that online. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out of here, guys. Um, I'd love to keep talking, but I, I do need to get home. Uh, bake a cake. I used to be a baker. Did you know that? I used to cook for a living before I started selling video games for a living. And when I opened up my first full-time store, I was actually a baker at a local restaurant. So uh, baking cakes is right up my uh, my alley. Yeah, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. It was lame, man, the way he killed Daredevil. No way that would have ever worked. And if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your participation and your comments. I love it. Uh, this has been a great stream. I really appreciate you guys supporting me, especially during this crazy time. 
and uh, I will continue to offer you the best content I can. But please do subscribe, share this video um, when it goes live, because uh, it's going to have to process now. But share it with everyone. Make sure everyone knows about L1 Games. Make sure all your friends subscribe. Hit that bell icon for future updates for videos. Follow me on all that social media we were talking about earlier. Um, Facebook, uh, L1 Games page in a group. Uh, Instagram is L1 Muzz. That's M-U-Z-Z -Z, like me. Um, Instagram is L1 Muzz. Uh, Twitter is L1 Games. TikTok is L1 Games. There's, you can find me at Gamer Muzz on, uh, on uh, um, Snapchat. Even you can follow me on Snapchat. I do all kinds of crazy stuff on Snapchat. Um, nothing lewd, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for the. I'm tongue tied now. It's been too long. I need a drink. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all later. Take it easy. Have a look at the store while I close this out. <laughs>